Hello dear language speakers, welcome back to my language showcase. Today I'm going to talk about the Sorbian language. There was no video last week because, well, my internet broke down. Nonetheless, I have been on tour and went to the lands of the Sorbian people, Lusatia in East Germany. First I will tell you about the history of this pretty old language and its people, and then I will tell you more about the language. The Sorbian history starts with the migration period of the 6th century. Many Slavic people migrated and so did the Sorbs into today's East Germany, like many other Slavic people. The Seisha got integrated into the Holy Roman Empire in the Middle Ages. After the 12th century, many German people moved to Lusatia and there were many wars. The Sorbian language had a long decline. In the Sachsenspiegel, a law book, and by other laws, the German language was made supreme to Sorbian. The Sorbian was later on banned in different locations, either totally or as court language. German-speaking people were preferred to Sorbs. The oldest written document of Upper Sorbian is the Burger Altwendisch or Buddhiska Pshisacha from 1532, the civic oath of the city Bautzen. The oldest written Lower Serbian uh, document was a note from the year 510 to work of Ovid. It said, Ach moyo luba lubka, bis vesolatisse miluba. It roughly translates to, Oh my beloved love, you be happy, you love to me. In the 13th to 16th century, the language was banned in many cities. In the core area, the language wasn't affected much. In the 17th century, there were 300,000 native speakers. Through the Reformation, the language started to spread. And during the Baroque, people got interested in Sorbian in a linguistic way. A few Sorbs wrote down lexicons and Sorbian books. During the Romanticism, a Sorbian nationality started to develop, but the Prussians also started with the Germanization. In the year 1900, 19,032 people said that they were Sorbs. The real number was probably higher. During the Weimarer Republic and the German Reich, the many Sorbs got murdered and suppressed. The Domovina, a Sorbian political league, founded in 1912, was refounded in 1945. In the DDR, East Germany, Sorbian was promoted. It got taught in schools and to today there are Sorbian signs in the area. Many Sorbian institutions got founded after 1945. Nonetheless, the number of Sorbian speakers declined over the time naturally for many reasons. Nowadays, there are 60,000 Sorbs in Germany, but only 13,000 people speak Upper Sorbian actively and only 7,000 people do the same with Lower Sorbian. Linguists predict that Lower Sorbian will die out soon in maybe 20 to 30 years. Experts say though that Upper Sorbian might survive this century. There are two dozen elementary schools that teach Sorbian and a few secondary schools. There are still two secondary schools left, the Serbsky Gymnasium Budishin and the Dolno Serbsky Gymnasium Husebus, where Sorbian is the first language. There are daily and monthly newspapers and other papers, there are Sorbian radio shows and a Sorbian Wikipedia. Now we come to the linguistical part. Alphabet. The Sorbian alphabet is Latin based. It has 32 letters. It leaves out the Latin letters Q, V and X. Most letters are similarly pronounced like in Polish, like the L. The alphabet varies from Lower to Upper Sorbian and some letters from earlier versions were left out. Here you can see the alphabet. Cases and nouns. Sorbian nouns have six to seven distinct cases. Nominative, accusative, dative, genitive, instrumental, locative and vocative. Last one is only in Upper Sorbian. They closely resemble Western Slavic cases like Polish and Czech. Let's declinate the Lower Sorbian word for tree. Bom. Bom, boma, bomoju, bom, z bomom, na bomie. Vocabulary. The vocabulary mostly consists of Slavic words, but there are some Germanic ones too. 
Adjectives. Adjectives, like in most Slavic languages, have to be congruent with a described noun. They have to be the same gender, number, and case. Verbs. Verbs differ in the following categories. The grammatical aspect, like in English, the perfect and the simple past. The different tenses, presence, future, and past. The grammatical person and grammatical mood. These differences are usually expressed by suffixes and rarely prefixes in different stems. Conclusion Sorbian is kind of a typical Western language, but only kind of. It is the only Slavic language only spoken in Germany, and it is also the only Slavic language not bordering another one. It is pretty much a Slavic exclave. I think that there has to be more awareness for dying out European languages. Such languages should be preserved. I, as a native Polish speaker, think that Sorbian is awkwardly familiar but kinda different. A Czech would probably say the same. Germans and Serbs should be proud on each other for working together the past years. That's it for my language showcase of Sorbian. Again, sorry for not uploading, but please annoy not me but my local internet provider. If you want your language showcase, write a comment. I hope you enjoyed the video and till next time.